So this right here is EG4 Life Power 4 V2. And anecdotally speaking, I believe this battery was probably the most popular, best-selling 48 volt server rack battery on the market. And that's just my opinion because I just see them everywhere. I don't know if there's actual statistics of that or whatnot. But anyways, they took that battery and made some improvements to make the V2 version. So in this video, we're gonna be going over, you know, the improvements that they made on that and this battery today because not only did they make improvements on it, but they also increased the warranty period they're going to warranty this battery for, while also keeping the price almost, I believe, exactly the same, if not, I think like $50 cheaper right now for a better battery. So that's insane, mainly because the prices of this stuff has been going down. Also, at the same time, the equipment or at least the technology or battery or their offerings, all that stuff has been getting better. So I believe we're currently in a market where a lot of the technology is improving while the cost of that technology improvement is also going down. So the time that we're in is insane. But anyways, let's get into this battery. So first off, let's go over some of the paperwork or the specs here real quick. Like I said, this is a 48 volt battery and this battery is nine, or UL1973 and UL9540A certified. And they've also increased the warranty period on this battery to be 10 years. The previous version I believe was like four or five years, but now this is 10 years. Um, if 10 years sounds familiar, it's mainly because they make a uh, EG4 LL version of this battery, which kind of is like the long life version, which they warranty for 10 years. So I don't know if this means uh, with all the improvements they made and the warranty period, they're eventually just gonna be offering one battery and phasing that out is what I would imagine would make sense for them. But like I said, this is just stuff that's coming to mind. Nobody told me this, no, I didn't speak to any about this, but it just makes sense to do that, right? So anyways, uh, let's get into it, right? <clears throat> So uh, some of the improvements that they made right off the back is now they have these handles which are foldable, okay? And if you're looking at this handle and why it looks so weird is because mine just happened to be damaged and chipping, but it still works, you know, perfectly fine. But the handle is now not permanent and is, you know, uh, foldable, right? So that's one improvement. The second improvement they made is you can see these terminal blocks and now they are massive. Previously, it used to only be one terminal block and it used to be almost like a dinky little terminal block, but now there's two of each, right? So there's two positives, big ones right here, and they do come with this little uh, plastic cover thing in case you want to keep that around, and two for the negative right there. Two massive terminal blocks, huge improvements. You know, no one's going to complain. Everybody's probably going to agree that's huge because if you wanted to, you know, somehow daisy chain them in a way or make them parallel previously without uh, having a bus bar system, you would have to double Double tap one terminal for the next battery on right so this is huge <clears throat> also the other improvement they made here is that now they have a dedicated breaker uh, for flipping the or the connecting the the electrical part of the battery to whatever it is that you know you're connecting it to and now the breaker is not also serving as the BMS switch what I mean by that is they've added a dedicated BMS switch right here so this switch uh, turns on and off the BMS uh, while not elect this one controls the connection between the battery and you know whatever thing you're supplying uh, but it's also a breaker so it's nice that they have a dedicated BMS switch because you know you don't have one thing doing both and sometimes you may want to just only turn on the BMS in case you wanted to do that you know but that's also a thing right so <clears throat> Uh, that's a huge improvement. The other huge improvement, uh, which most people are going to appreciate, is now they have a CAN bus connection and an RS-485 connection. Previously, the older generation Life Power 4 only had an RS-485 connection, so it couldn't do CAN uh, bus communications, right? So uh, that's a huge improvement. Also, uh, what they've added on this V2 version is now there are dedicated COM ports, battery COM ports. And if you're looking at this entire section right here and you're thinking, wow, that looks really familiar, and you're thinking, uh, why is that? It's because this section is pro probably exactly the same as the EG4, let's just say LL battery, or the Power Pro battery, or the indoor wall mount battery, 
right? Um, so I believe, and I can't say this for certain until we probably open it up or whatnot, but I think they would imaginely be using the same BMS system to do that. And I think they are mainly because I've already, in other previous videos, connected this battery using the COM port to the uh, EG4 indoor wall mount battery, and it seems to work perfectly the same. So I'm just gonna go out on a limb and then say that, all right? The other improvement they made is now there are six dip switches for the ID connector, which are the ID identifier, which is mainly the uh, the address you can really set on this battery. So on the EG4 version one model, there were only four, but now there are six. And with six uh, allows you to get up to 64 of these batteries uh, independently addressed in one system. So that's huge because uh, I've seen a lot of pictures and videos of people having huge installations of these batteries. And sometimes you cannot get all BMS communications going because you know, you can only be limited to four previously, but now there is six, right? So that's another improvement. <clears throat> uh, the other improvement on here is now they have protocol switches here and they also have like smart linking and other uh, things you can connect there. Right, uh, so you can control the protocol that it's talking to um, and also do like smart link protocol, which allows you to get into some of the advanced features, but that is also huge right there, okay? The other thing they've made improvements on is there is now an LCD USB port. And for all the information that I've looked for online um, is that there is no documentation on what this is used for at this time. But what I'm imagining is eventually they'll probably release some type of visual screen thing that you could connect to here that kind of shows you a display, right, of what's going on and you can connect to it mainly something similar to what the EG4 LL model would have. Uh, you know, the, it has a screen that tells you the, the battery parameters and the stuff going in and out of it. So I'd imagine uh, they put that on here and you could just connect it as needed. Um, and I'm just going on a limb here, but I would say <clears throat> they probably don't want to put a screen on every battery because, you know, no one's going to be sitting there looking at the screen the whole time. Also, it would be an additional cost. And like I mentioned right now, this battery is for $1,200. So trying to keep the cost down while making improvements would be huge and adding a screen to every battery would just be a cost that, you know, not everybody needs. So for the people who need a screen, you could probably get a screen. But like I said, even the documentation just says that this is reserved and doesn't tell you what that's for, okay? Uh, the other stuff on here, resale alarm switch, they have charged all this stuff is pretty standard and similar. So all that stuff is good. But the other thing to point out on here that is not you know obvious by looking at it on this is that this is now rapid shutdown compatible. So once you have um, a switch or something that you can connect to, or if you connect the, uh, the communications to like something like an 18K or something like that, once you hit rapid shutdown, it will also shut down this uh, battery also. The V1 battery did not have that capability, but now it does. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, hey, that's not super important, but if you're living in an area where regulations require something like that, then it's gonna be important and you can install this up to code, okay? The other thing you can't really see too well, but you can kind of see going on up in here is that the top part is a little bit flat. As you can see right here, um, it's one piece of metal that they've kind of bended or stamped over. So now that the screws are on the side, um, the V1 battery had all the big screws on the top. And I know that's a huge pain from experience, mainly because for people who didn't have the rack cabinet to begin with and that were stacking batteries on top, that was a huge pain because, you know, they always stuck out even though they attempted to countersink them. So uh, that right there is a huge improvement that I've known just from the build quality itself. But other than that, those are the major improvements going on up in here. Here we have it installed. This right here is a LifePar 4 V2. Here's the V1 original model and here's the LL model. So I know we talked about the differences, but it's better and easier to show you. You can see it, right? So here's two uh, bigger terminals versus a single terminal. They both have the breaker. Um, as you can see here, this is the CAN R45 Batcoms port here, which does not exist here. This only has RS485. This has the dedicated BMS switch here. This one does not have a dedicated switch here. The state of charge indicator is pretty much the same. But the other thing to point out in here is that this right here, I believe is a four gauge wire, 
uh, I believe that ships with the battery when you buy this. This right here, I think, I don't know what it is, but I think it's like 16 millimeter or something like that, whatever that converts to, that ships with this wire. So as you can see, the wire here definitely seems to be a bit larger, right? Than the V1 model. So that's also good to see here. Uh, right here, you see I have BMS communication set up. Right now, this one is set to communicate with the uh, wall mount battery that you can kind of see right there. Uh, so it does work. We can go into that and show you what the difference is if you want to see that. But also the four red dip switches are down here, whereas you have the six dip switches up here, right? So there's a little bit of a difference. And even if you look at it from the front, you know, the lettering is a little bit different. The uh, color is just a smidge different, but you know, obviously the big giveaway are the terminals, right? So take a look at it compared to the uh, EG4 LL model. This one also has a 10 year warranty. This one also has a uh, six dip switches for the ID connector. It has CAN bus, 485 and two BATCOM ports, just like uh, the BMS communication stuff here, right? It also has a dedicated on and off switch right here. It has uh, the breaker right here, but it also has, as you can see here, a screen that comes up. And this is pretty much what I was talking about earlier. Uh, this uh, USB port right here that says LCD. I'm imagining eventually they'll come out with something you can plug into here to kind of make it look like this where you can kind of cycle through some of the specs and see what's going on there, right? You could see the uh, voltages and stuff like that. So I imagine that's something that they'll probably come up with. But because, you know, they've really bridged the gap with this battery from this to this, this battery is now much closer to the LLV2 or the LL model and um, this also has a 10 year warranty. So like I mentioned before, I would not be surprised if they eventually stopped offering this model and this model and just stuck with the one. I imagine it may be a little bit easier on logistics to just, you know, manufacture one uh, that's pretty much the same of both. And, you know, maybe uh, the logistics may just be easier. Who knows? But I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, we don't work for EG4 or, or, or anything like that. So, you know, we're just speculating. But also the other quick thing to point out here is that you can see with the LL model, you have two uh, spots where you can terminate on the battery, just like here, right? Just like here and here, but on the L1s or the V1s, they do not have that, right? So as you can see, works perfectly, as you would imagine, it fits perfectly inside the EG4 rack. And if you look at how much it sticks out, the terminal sticks out just as much as the top part or the front part of the LL model, because the LL model obviously sticks out a little bit more than the other ones, right? Uh, something we didn't mention, but uh, should have covered earlier is that inside here are actual fire arresters. The, uh, L, the V1 model did not have this fire arrestors, I believe. So uh, that is one improvement, which you'll see when you open it up, but we're not gonna do that, right? So as you can see here, the uh, handles here are permanent, whereas the handles on here, be a little bit careful here, is um, foldable. So if that's something that you wanted to look into or worried about, then that's that. So hopefully this gives you a better idea between the V1, the LL, and the V2. So that's what you get with this updated V2 battery. And I will go ahead and say, this is probably now the battery to get, especially if you're not looking for wall mount batteries. I know a lot of the hype nowadays is the wall mount batteries because you know they can probably in a way take up less space, mount them on a wall, all that kind of fun stuff, right? But if you're looking for server rack batteries, this is the one to get mainly because right now at this time, I believe it's around $1,200, right? Uh, I think previously the Life Power 4 V1, not on sale was like 1350 or 1250 or something like that. So uh, $1,200 for uh, these batteries seems to be a steal if you are getting them, um, you know, with free shipping and stuff like that. So every once in a while, Signature Solar will have like a free shipping deal where you order, I don't know, like two or 3,000 worth of stuff and get that for free shipping. So that's a huge improvement, right? Because if you order a lot of these batteries, uh, you know, just saving the 50 bucks or 150 bucks per battery uh, for a 10 year battery is huge. And this is, like I said, the, the server rack battery to get if you're in the server rack battery market because it has everything that you could really wish for and it can work with the communications uh, with the uh, 
Power Pro, the indoor wall mount, uh, other batteries, uh, other systems. I have other videos which we've used this battery and connected it to Victron systems. Obviously, it works perfectly fine with the EG4 uh, communications on here. Uh, or EG4 devices, you know, like the 6000 XP, the 12K, 18K. So like I said, this is a great battery and I'm, it's awesome to see that, you know, technology, pricing and everything is just moving forward and just working better for the customer. So if you're interested in battery, I would highly recommend you get it. Um, just if you want a link to it, just look at the description below. Otherwise, uh, that's my thoughts. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.